four games remain of no doubt excitement, panic, nervousness before ending, we hope, with promotion. The mini run in starts on Saturday against Borough. Join us to discuss it here on the Blue Monday podcast. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Blue Monday podcast discussing the town up or down. Since 2015, I'm Rich Woodward and welcome to the pre-match show brought to you in partnership with our friends at the Best Pub in Ipswich, The Greyhound. We go live every week, 8pm on YouTube and then on podcast shortly afterwards to give you all the insight of town's big game on the weekend. And they're all big games at the moment. Uh, there's four left and Seb, we've been out of the country for a while. Seb Brown's here. I kind of feel like we, we let everyone down, you know, the Norwich situation. Would it have happened if we were in the pre-match seats? I'm not sure. But anyway, we're here. We're back for the final four. How are you doing, mate? You look a bit tired. You can explain why if you want as well. A little bit tired. Yeah. The jet lag is, is, is kicking in. I mean, to be fair, both you and me, we got up at four 30 in the morning in uh, <laughs> Vegas time to watch the Derby game. And I think neither has predicted a victory. So I'm not sure the result would have been any different. I think I went for a draw and you went for the, the defeat, which actually happened. So I'm not entirely sure we can blame that one on no. ourselves, but it's good to be back. Yes. Here we go. Four games to go. How is it? How is it the game week 43 already? This is, this is crazy, isn't it? It feels like yesterday that it's Sunderland away and George Hurst opens the scoring and, Suddenly we sit here with what three weeks of the season left to go. This this year more than any other, I think, feels like it has absolutely flown by. Yeah, and as we say, the emotions are running high as well. I don't last year, despite the fact we were chasing Shepherd Wednesday for the majority of the time, and probably about this time, I think we were drawing with Cheltenham, was it? And then slipped out second down to third and all that kind of stuff. It didn't feel as dramatic as it does at the moment we'll talk about Watford shortly because that was last night we need to give that some thought but I don't know about you about the nerves Seb are you feeling them more strongly than you did last season yeah last season I, I, I wasn't really nervous at all I think from Bolton away which was start of March onwards I kind of got cockier and cockier because I went to most of the games and saw how good we were and I kind of figured it will all be all right I think this year the, the prize is so so different isn't it I think the fact that none of the, the the top three sides won this midweek is, is quite telling I think the nerves the pressure both from the the players and from the and from the crowds are starting to have an impact and yeah, this this feels very different to last year because it just feels so much bigger, doesn't it? You know, this could if, if if we can get promoted, this will set the football club up for the next kind of what five years in terms of parachute payments, etc. It feels a lot bigger than it did last year. Last year was big, part of the the first phase of the plan of the of the game changer era was also to get to the championship and establish ourselves and push on. We've su surpassed any kind of you know wild expectations we had this season, and it just feels now it's getting very very close to the end. That yeah, you, you, you'll either look back and it'll be the best three weeks we've ever had, uh, or it'll be, yeah, okay, so here we go, let's regroup and go again in the playoffs. So we will see what happens. Um, but yeah, the, overall, it feels very, very different to last year for me. Yeah, uh, regardless of what happens between now and these four games, and we obviously want a positive outcome, of course we do. I think what a time to be alive. What a, This is a time to embrace the challenge, to embrace the nerves, um, and, and hopefully uh, we'll bring across those vibes um, tonight if we can uh, despite the jet lag uh, but hopefully folk in the chat are feeling the same way as well because what excitement what a great thing to be part of of course last two um, you know not 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 scored not won but we know this team is capable of great things and uh, a home game on Saturday against a really great opposition as well so it's it's fantastic time to be a town fan so let's keep that energy high shall we folks let's say hello to folk in the chat here hello to Paul um all decent uh, some decent stuff at times first half against Watford's um, lost a bit of cohesion, he says, second half, but we're second. We dream on. Um, Harry Clark adds some much more uh, adds some more offensiveness, I think is what he means there. Burgess, superb. Yeah, Burgess, low-key. Well, not even low-key anymore. High-key. Uh, what's, the, what's the opposite of low-key? High-key? Underrated, Whatever. I think, probably. Over, you know, he's, I, he's I don't think he is underrated anymore. I think uh, it's just so consistent now, Seb. I think everyone knows it, isn't he? Can Burgess probably... I think he goes under the radar. I think every week he's never less than a seven. And he's probably got to be in the top three running for, for player of the year, I would suggest. Maybe so. He's going to have to do lots to get past Morsey and Davis. Yeah. Charlie, this is what we want. I am 100% proud 
of what we've achieved this season, no doubt. But if we want promotion, we need to show more urgency and convert some of the more chance, some of the chances we create. Yes, they yeah agree with that. I'm sure uh, players will as well. Steve is here. Feel sorry for Edmondson. Um, got back in the team and then rolled his ankle by the sounds of it. Looks like he might be out for a while. Uh, Jerry is here. Made the trip from Wales and not running for a change. And yes, perhaps slightly disappointed at the final whisper, but reflecting afterwards. What a fantastic season and still in our hands, he says. Uh, Michael, good day to Michael in Brisbane. Thought it was a good game. Uh, maybe a draw fair result. Uh, can't disagree with that, Michael. Um, and do let us know what the weather is like in Melbourne, um, Brisbane, as always as well. Gary's here. I uh, think Saturday's a massive game. They're all massive, aren't they? Um, need the three points. Decent performance last night. After Saturday, though, I agree with that. Uh, we played last night. Uh, well, we played well last night, in my view, says MW. Only missed a goal or two to cap it. To the next game and to the Premier, says as well. Uber ITFC. This is, I'm loving this. Let's start the show with some positivity. Win four and we are up. Uh, let's not talk about the minor details, like how hard it will be in those away games indeed. Um, Rando, I see you. I'm not putting that up on the screen. Um, but he says, hope you had a good one. Appreciate that. Uh, Max, uh, morning from Melbourne. Second place with four games to go. Unbelievable. It's 33 degrees for Adam in Flowrider. Um, and it's, it's cloudy in Santiago, Santiago, Chile. Um, hope you enjoyed the trip to Vegas. We did. That's another podcast. Uh, Colin's here. CC Drags is giving us a promo uh, score prediction already. We'll come back to that. Um, still dark in Oz. Um, Colin, lads, we will do this, he says, and lots of football-related emojis. That's great. Uh, thank you, everyone, for getting involved, um, and we will come to the chat throughout. Um, but, yeah, I'm just uh, yeah, just seeing what else. We've got plenty of stuff here. Yeah, good to have you all with us. Um, and let's, should we talk about Watford now, Seb? I, I made it back. Uh, logistics were very much in my favour, so much that I had half a pint in the Black Horse before I went to the game as well. <laughs> Calm as you like. Yeah, chilled out, entertainer as I am. Uh, were you able to follow the game at all, or were you on the motorway? I got the first half via Town TV on the wireless, driving back, and then I pretty much walked through my front door just as the second half was about to kick off. So I caught the second half of it on uh, the Sky Red button. So obviously you were the you were the man there, nil nil draw. I've seen stuff on social media, frustrating. But by, by all accounts, I missed the half that was all the good play. I mean, second half, I didn't I didn't really think too much happened. But give us your rundown on that that first half because having watched the highlights, having gauged most of the mood, I think we were a bit unlucky to go in at nil nil. We had a couple of chances that we you know another day the keepers made a couple of good saves and potentially if they go you know well broadhead the width of a post it's a very different second half isn't it yeah fine margins first half I, I i mean first off um plenty of respect for watford very uh we know at the moment drawing most of their games but re against good teams as well so really effective at what they do uh, maybe lacking a little bit of um attacking intent or going for uh, for goals, maybe a few forays, and this particularly in the start of the second half, where you kind of felt like the momentum swung a bit. Um, but yeah, as the as the first half went on, Seb, I kind of it's among the better performances I remember from the recent run. Obviously, things are getting panicky and nervous, and as much as we we loved the Southampton result performance wise, I think we'd have to accept that Southampton were probably the better team for a good chunk of that one. Um, and last night was more of us being on the front foot. Um, I think a few things stuck out. Certainly, the team looked tired to me, or some of the players certainly looked jaded. And whether that's mental fatigue or whether that's physical fatigue, we know there's illness in the camp, etc. It just felt there are a few players out there running on fumes, and you know, fantastic performance in the, in, the, in that context. But you could tell, uh, like Sir Kiefer Moore, obviously playing with an injury. Even Leif Davis wasn't getting much beyond halfway. First off, I don't know if that was a tactical choice or not or whether it was just to kind of keep him slow burn him and then let unleash him in the second half because he was much more maraudy in the second half. Um, even Caden Jackson said, who came in a right wing, didn't look his usual kind of got in a couple of times, but it wasn't as, you know, wasn't exerting that much. And maybe that's deliberate with the Middlesbrough game in mind. So given that you kind of, maybe forgive some of the finishing. Cause I think Kiefer Moore probably should bury that header. It's a great save by Backman, but similar to Broadhead's shot where he, you know, he makes the chance for himself. He's in the middle of the goal, either side of the keeper. It's, it's in the net, you know, um, it, whether that's fatigue or not, you don't know, but it's those kind of fine margins. And in the end, I guess we have to thank, thank uh, Haladki for clawing <laughs> away a shot from the halfway line. Now, a few people have put this, let me know in the chat. I think I, from the low, North Stand lower, 
I think this is a shot from the Watford guy. I've forgotten his name. I Apologies. Don't, I think he absolutely hammers it to clear Has the ball from centre mid. Perfect curl on it. Yeah, yeah. I've done, I'm not denying that with the with the save from Clacky. It's proved it's, it's it's going in. It's on target. But I don't think he, he he's trying that. I think he, all he wants to do is hoof the ball. The fact they kept the ball from the resulting corner suggests that they they were just right, simply true. looking to see out the clock. They had no intentions of going on to win the game. I don't think. So I think he puts his foot through it to win the tackle to clear the ball, and we nearly get caught out on one, don't we? But a great bit of backtracking there by Clacky and a and a great save. What did you think about the players that came into the side? We've, Ed, Edmondson's been mentioned. Obviously, he's gone off injured. Unfortunately. If rolled his ankle again so I assume Wolfenden will come back in for the Middlesbrough game Taylor in midfield we've spoken recently I think it was against Southampton about how he kind of looked to pick up the ball and drive how did he get on um, and the other changes what 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 kind of stood out for you of, of the players that, the four players that came in yeah I mean Ed, Edmondson didn't have a huge amount to do generally calm on the ball every now and then you worry a little bit you know gets a bit closer as a moment start the, the start of the second half I think or maybe the end of the first half where him Morsey and Hladki have a little bit of a brain fart and Watford high press and we nearly got undone there but but generally was was fine I thought Taylor had a really excellent game and I think Taylor had energy to keep going I think maybe that change was made a little bit prematurely I don't think Luonga came on and, and made a huge amount of difference. He did have a shot that was blocked that looked destined for the for the back of the net. But that aside, I actually felt like Taylor gave us more impetus and energy. Um, and we've kind of talked about Luongo, you know, illness or what have you, injury maybe. I, I just didn't I didn't think that he raised us. I think we just maybe maintained the levels where we were at, whereas he could have given Taylor another 10, 20 minutes, and I think we would have been okay with that. Um, Jackson, as I say, wasn't his kind of usual explosive or kind of continually intense self. We know that Jackson can run for days, but it just didn't see it felt much more um, like strategic when he went on these lung busting runs, maybe to save energy, perhaps. And in that respect, we didn't see a huge amount from him. And when we did that final ball, maybe, uh, you know, it's not as good as Burns is put it that way, but, yeah. you know, certainly tried and, is a great option out wide given the absence of Burns, who we definitely miss. Um, and uh, the other change, Harry Clark, me. Twanzebe. Clark, yeah. I, again, I, f- I kind of feel sorry for Clark because he's not as good a defender as Twanzebe, but he definitely offers much more attacking intent. And so for that game last night, I can kind of understand why the change was made. That is a really good rivalry or, or kind of battle for that position because they are kind of different defenders for different needs. Um, and therefore, I, I I wouldn't be surprised if Tuanzebe comes back in actually against Borough. Uh, more about them later. But yeah, Clark didn't re- let anyone down really. Um, early booking, I think, didn't help his cause though. But yeah, um, it, as I say, it just felt there was a little bit of fatigue, whatever you want to, however you want to interpret that. Also, and, and the reason for kind of, and I, I've got I've got history with this, so apologies in advance. There was an air of something around the stadium as well last night. There was a good amount of people trying to generate an atmosphere, but it the Southampton game was the complete opposite, where the, the whole stadium, you kind of felt like they realised that they needed to get behind the team because maybe Southampton were, on paper, the better side. Last night, I don't know whether it was just nervousness because of the results that had happened the night before, or just some complacency that we should be turning over teams in mid-table. It just didn't feel like... Portman Road was energised as much as it could be. And obviously, as I said, people tried their best to generate that atmosphere. But we really, really need to be the kind of 12th player for the for the yeah. last few. And, you know, starting with Saturday, we really need to go to Portman Road with an intent to get behind the team and to do it for 90 minutes because there are going to be twists and turns and the unpredictable moments and all that kind of stuff. And if the team are running on fumes as we think they are, then... They need us, guys. We really need to get behind them. And I, I just felt we were maybe a six or a seven out of ten last night when we needed to be an eight or a nine. So that's my take on things. Have I covered all the bases there, do you think? I think so. Just one thing I want to ask. Hutchinson from the radio highlights kind of in the first half appeared quite influential, presumably much more comfortable back in the number 10 role than we saw him out on the flank at, at Norwich. How did, how did he kind of get on in that role? Yeah, I, I think actually he made more impact when he moved to the right in the second half. Actually, right, okay, right. There's a few moments that I forget the left back, um, but the left back couldn't deal with him and his running was, I've never, you know, we know that he's got a trick in him, but he was dropping the shoulder three or four times. He was really trying to, you know, get that space to get him behind and was really running at them. I thought I had, Hutchinson had a, a decent game. It was just the end product maybe that was lacking. And 
he's a threat whether you play him in the 10 or, or in the wide position. There was actually a point, Seb, in the first half where Hutchinson, Jackson and Clark were kind of creating this tripod or whatever, the you know, passing triangle. That was a pretty common thing. Hutchinson moved well out to the wide uh, positions to try and make an overload there. And that worked really well as well. So maybe that's the strategy too that we're trying to deploy. But yeah, I, I think with without Burns, if I'm honest, I'd, I think Hutchinson there. I guess it depends on Chaplin, doesn't it, in terms of injury form, etc. Um, but I think he can play either. He's that good, isn't he? So um, yeah, yeah. Anything, anything else? Uh, let's go to the chat for a start. Let's see what folk have got to say. Colin says, "Take the roof off on Saturday, everyone. Please sing loud and proud. Agree with that as well." Uh, what else have we got from folk? Uh, Charlie Watford came for a draw and executed their game plan to a perfection. Frustrating, but credit to them. Yeah, uh, probably. Fair. I kind of feels harsh saying they came for a draw, but I think they set up, um, they set up maybe to break on the counter rather than to take the game to us. But there were moments where they had spells of possession, Charlie. But yeah, but the fact they didn't put that last minute corner into the box speaks volumes. Maybe so, maybe so. But uh, but you can't begrudge them that um, because we could have broken from a corner. Perhaps I, 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 you know, you just never know. They they know the threat we have in the ninety seventh minute. Although it didn't really get that far. but yeah, as Colin says, they were a good footballing side. And, and I think that's the thing. We kind of underestimate these teams, these kind of second, third year parachute teams. They've still got Premier League quality players. Yeah. yeah. Um, and cleverly, as, as I said, has clearly stumbled across, uh, well, stumbled across suggests it's fluke, has clearly fought, figured out a situation, a tactical situation there that is working for them in terms of being hard to beat. Whether they can then take the step up and start winning matches, and there's a thumbs up for some reason, um, is another thing. Um, but, you know, away at Ipswich, you can't begrudge anyone playing that, and it's a mark of respect, I guess. Uh, yeah. Tess adds this as well. Uh, all we need is Seb signing off the pre-match pod with a come on your blues, and all will be well. I think you did it, Seb, before we left, didn't you? So is it I not did, my so turn? I would have been Blackburn, wouldn't I? And that kind of carried forth for Southampton, and then, yeah, the guys the guys didn't do a come on your blues for the Norwich Are we blaming game, them, so not you? Blame so Craig for yeah. Yeah, the host so we'll... chair. Craig messed up there, and that's why we lost the derby, everybody. We'll give you what you want, Tess, if you stick around <laughs> until the end. Um, what else have we got? Uh, Rob, evening. I thought our set pieces were poor last night. We never mixed it up, and their centre backs dealt with it easily. I mean, big physical team, uh, maybe right there again. Tiredness if you're running from one end of the pitch to take a corner like Leaf Davis has to, perhaps that's a factor. But I think we do also like the second phases of set pieces that statistically, particularly corners, are massively overrated by football supporters as being a really good attacking yeah. chance, but short corners. Um, and maybe second phases from corners are actually probably better than the immediate delivery, particularly when more went off. Uh, Paul here, more isn't as effective as when he first got here. He looks like he's mm. playing with an injury. I think maybe right. Uh, look better, certainly. A lot. Yeah, he's not played a lot of football in the first half of the season either, has he? So is the, is the fitness starting to catch up a little bit with him? We just need to find a way to get through Saturday, don't we? Get three points on Saturday. Then you've got this two-week mini break where batteries can be recharged, things can be Ooh. worked on before that massive last three-game week of the uh, of the season. Just find a way to get through Saturday against Borough. Yeah, Gary, um, on the shot in the last minute, definitely a shot, in my opinion. They tried it in the first half. Great point, definitely. Oh, did they? Okay, that was right. not the first time they tried it. And I, I'd imagine Cleverly as a central midfielder, who's got a pretty fearsome shot, if I remember rightly, during his playing career, probably told him to try from range. Uh, so James, on the other hand, very Jason Cundy-like, which was more of a just a fortuitous block, I think. Um, but Rando, one, two, three, definitely a shot from the Rand stand and whistling in, I'd have given up watching football if that had gone in. We know the feeling there. Yeah, sense of foreboding, but well done uh, to Haladki there. Charlie giving much praise to Cameron Burgess, um, as is Colin, um, and very much leading Seb on, on the pitch as well. There was points, we've talked about the set pieces, a few long throws where it seemed like Cam Burgess was instructing the whole team, you know, telling people where to be. So great leader as well. Um, Rob, I thought Leaf had a good game last night. He looked fitter than the previous three or four games in a row. Probably now I was earnest. But yeah, so interesting first half. Rob, I don't know whether you noticed that. He didn't really get too far forward first half. But second half, definitely much more. A few moments, Seb, where he kept balls in from crossfield passes that he had no right to. And that may be one of the factors behind him being up for, Seb. March, player of the month for the championship, along with manager of the month for Kieran McKenna. Your thoughts on, on that briefly? I don't know who else has been nominated. I'm not going to lie. Uh, McKenna surely must be in with a great shout, given we won all the games. Oh, it was Cardiff in March. That was that would have been. So we had, would have had one defeat, I guess, in that in that period, wouldn't we? But as we've seen with the rest of the top three, everyone is kind of stuttering a little bit at the moment. We'll discuss Michael Carrick. He must have been in a shout for it because they've been doing pretty well in March as well. Leif Davis obviously got the 
couple of assists against Southampton, got the goal against Southampton. So, yeah, I don't know which players have been nominated, but yeah, hopefully the manager of the month curse won't kick in if McKenna does win it. No such thing. Uh, who else is up for it, you ask? Uh, for manager, yeah, Corberon, Farker and Wagner. I'd no give Carrick. it to him. No Carrick. And Strange. the players up for player are uh, Mikey Johnston, we know about him from West Brom. Yeah. Uh, Gabby Sara at Norwich. And Ellis Sims. I think Ellis Sims probably Ellis wins. Ellis Sims wins that, yeah. I think Ellis Sims wins that. Goal scorers and and kind of what sexy up front players tend to win that. So it'll be either him or it'll be Johnston at West Brom. who's banged in a couple of long ranges, hasn't he? Yep. Uh, and McKenna fair, can let somebody else have it and he'll win manager of the season in three weeks' time. There you go. Uh, one final thought. Let's, I mean, let's put the league table up, shall we? Just remind everyone, folks, um, that things are maybe not as bad as it feels after after the midweek games. There's, oh, there's the league table, Seb. Uh, Ipswich Town, second, 88 points. 88 points. I was uh, walking home from Radio... So, um, walking home from the ground listening to Radio Suffolk and their post-match. Excellent post-match with Graham Mack. And he said that the 88th point is the most points we've got in a top two season ever. So yeah, eight, early team was 87, wasn't it? So we've now surpassed that with four games to go. And look, all we have to do is match lead results. And that's what we've done midweek. And if we win four more games, everybody, we will be in the Premier League next season, which sounds crazy, but it's the facts. And can I surprise you? As well, can I shock you? Um, I, I, I phased you. That's fine. Um, you have a go. No, don't. Um, this here's the five game form table. Look who's top of the five game form table. Seb, admittedly, um, on the top with four other teams equal on points. Uh, but look, it's in switch top of the five game form table on goal difference. Ten points from so two points per game, um, despite the last two. And I can't see Leicester. I can see Leeds in eighth. But there you go, Seb. Did that does that surprise you? It we're does a little bit. As football fans, we're always quite short-termists, aren't we? So we kind of remember the last couple of victories and even getting across the line against Blackburn in the second half was a real slog. But we did get the three points. Southampton, they were much better than us for large spells of that game. But again, we did get the three points. So yeah, looking looking kind of back over the five games, then fully deserved. We we are in form. We're the most in form of the top three. We all kind of dropped points midweek. None of us scored any goals, which I think is quite telling with the, the nerves that may be kicking at this set, set of the season. But if you'd have said to us back, in August, you will be four games to go. You'll be second in the league and it's all in your hands. We'd have absolutely snapped your hand off. Uh, Neil saying, uh, top of the 10 game form table two. Um, if only I had that to my hands as well. So so there you go, everyone. Um, and I see, Paul, your comment will come to that in a second. A couple of bits of news before I basically hand over to Seb because I haven't had enough time to <laughs> even check what he sent me on Middlesbrough. Uh, ITFC women back in action at home this Saturday, Sunday. Ugh! Sunday, 2 p.m. at the AGL against Hashtag. Big game off the back of a 1-0 win over MK Dons. Looking to finish strong, looking to build on the fantastic game at Portman Road as well. So do head to the AGL on Sunday. The drum will be in residence, but don't let that put you off. Also, in terms of bits of news from the wider club as well, uh, the sat uh, Saturday's game against Borough is this year's foundation fixture. Last year's with this Charlton 6-0, so it'd be great to, to build on that. Um uh, basically uh, promoting all the great work that the foundation does in the community and and, and fundraising etc plenty of stuff going on things to call out um, apart from i think there'll be people taking collect, uh, donations and all that kind of stuff there's a number you can text 70850 with itfc 10 to donate 10 pounds but you can but one pound from every ticket sold and one pound from every match program sold will go to the foundation. 50% of products on 50% uh, of profits on new foundation products in Planet Blue. Plus, worth noting that our good friends at the Greyhound, who are bringing you the podcast, uh, the pre match podcast, um, what are they doing? They are 50p from every pint and one pound from every foundation burger sold at the Greyhound will go to the foundation and other businesses locally. Um, are also getting involved as well. So please support the foundation. They do brilliant work. We've talked about how it was really bad for the community and, and the, the club in general when um, that was disbanded under Marcus Evans. So it's back and, and doing really fantastic work. So please get behind the folks there. And if you ever needed a reason to have a pint or a burger at the Greyhound, this is it. Presumably they'll get 25p for Tony's half pint, I assume. I, I hope so. I hope so. Uh, we'll ask Dan, but uh, maybe you can buy two half points and sit them against each other. Do the right thing, Tony. Do the right thing. 
Do the right thing. Um, drink responsibly, everyone. Uh, let's get on to Middlesbrough. Seb, from the outside, having of not being able to have time to do my own little research myself, it kind of feels like Borough have come into the form maybe a little bit too late. There was a big lull, yeah. wasn't there, middle of the year, around the time that we beat them at the away game as well, where you kind of thought this team looked set up for success this season after last year. Big credit for Michael Carrick as well from the outside. Obviously, the him and McKenna came through at United similar times in their coaching careers. And you kind of thought, wow, Middlesbrough must, must be one of the favourites for automatics, let alone promotion more generally in top six. Um, but have they left it too late or are they have they just come into form at the right time no i th- i think they've left it too late you can clip this up now for when they finish sixth and <laughs> play us in a in a semi final in the first week of may so i think they've left too much to do i mean we we spoke about them in the summer on our 1 to 24 preview with gab i had them second i think you had them in the automatic promotion spots as well because they did so well last season under michael carrick after he took over they were one point i think one place above the relegation zone he takes over wins pretty much two points per game for two thirds of a season gets them fourth. Okay. They don't make it through the playoffs. They lose to lose to Kov in the semi-final, but you know, they, 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 they buy in the summer. They have, they lose a couple of assets. They have to sell the likes of Tuba Akpom. They reinvest some of that money. And I thought they would hit the ground running. And I think even on the December pre-match show, I'm fairly sure we sat here and kind of said, you know, the, the new signings will take a bit of time to gel, but they will they will really look to, to go in the second half of the season. They've had massive injury problems. Uh, they've not been able to hit any kind of consistency. An awful start to the season, like Trevor just said there. They were winless in the first seven games. Then they win six on the bounce. Then they kind of fluctuate form between, between then and the, about six to eight weeks ago. And as you say, they have hit really good form recently, fifth in that form table you popped on the screen a minute ago. But surely they've left it too late, haven't they? You know, they needed to beat Hull last night. Hull and Borough were on the same number of points. Um, they both needed the victory to kind of close the gap to sixth. And I just think it's too much. Now, six points off the playoffs is too much to make up with me, uh, with, with me, with, with, with what, four games to go. And I think Coventry and Preston have a game in hand as well. So done too much. They'll look to kind of go again in the summer, I guess. Yeah, it's strange how... You usually have teams who are kind of on the beach and and maybe Watford were one of them, maybe Borough as well from the, you know, from the outside perhaps, but suddenly playing with a lot more freedom, isn't it? You know, you haven't got the pressure of the likes of the top six teams or the teams just outside, you know, hunting down that sixth spot, nor the teams down the bottom fighting for relegation. Usually you just see teams stepping off maybe at league one level where we've been used to for the last three years. It's worth reminding ourselves that as you get higher up the pyramid, the professionalism, the energy levels, the attitude, etc., is much different. And and therefore, Borough actually finishing really strongly in a team that we really need to take seriously because, yeah, the quality is still there, isn't it? And, and momentum, which they have on their side now, also important. You mentioned, uh, do you want to give us the, the, the points situation, Seb, in recent results? Yeah, so currently sat ninth in the table with 62 points. So they're six points off the playoffs, having played a game in hand. Uh, sorry, played a game more than the sides above them, which is Preston and uh, and Coventry. They've won 18 of the 42 games played so far this season. It's a win rate of 43%. They've drawn eight, lost 16, goal difference of plus five. 11 clean sheets so far this season, which is only the 10th highest in the division. They create chances. They're fourth for big chances created with 97, but they are second for big chances missed with 65. So we spoke a minute ago, I spoke they sold Tuba Akpom, who got, was it 30 odd goals last season? They sold him to Ajax for big money in the summer. They went out and replaced him. They spent five million quid on Emmanuel Latte Lath, who we'll discuss in a minute, who has kind of got some goals, but hasn't taken some chances here and there. And, and that's why they are where they are. But as you said, momentum can be key. They will really look to go for this kind of remaining four games, finish the season positively, and then look to really build and hit the ground running early next summer. Anything you want to draw our attention to from the, the Hull game, Seb? Yeah, well, they both needed to win. Like I kind of said, it was a two-all draw last night. Uh, one nil up very early on through Latte Lath. They went 2-1 down. They had a bit of a... a, a what's that? I don't want to swear on the... Brain podcast. fart? A mess up. Yeah, a brain fart from playing out from the back. It was... Keeper plays a, a ball to... But Sonny Diang plays the ball to uh, Lewis O'Brien. And kind of the Sam Morsey role. He dropped deep to pick the ball up. Centre-half to split. He dropped deep. And one of the uh, Hull players gets a foot in and, and, and scores. Lovely counter-attack goal to make it 2-2 by Latte Lath, the Zaya Jones down the right-hand side does really well. It's a really lovely goal, but they both had to win, didn't they? A draw suit didn't really suit either of them, and, and that's the reason why I don't think they will get crashed the playoffs. 
They got a point, however. They are unbeaten in the last eight, five wins and three draws in that time. You put the form table up a minute ago. They are fifth in the sixth game form table overall with three wins and three draws. The wins were against Birmingham, Sheffield Wednesday and Swansea. The draws were against Blackburn, Southampton and Hull. And they are a good side away from home as well. Their away form is decent. Sixth highest in the league, 31 points from 21 games. They score a lot of goals away from the Riverside. 36 goals scored on the road is second to only Leicester, but 34 goals conceded is the seventh highest. They do score a lot of goals on the road, but they also concede a fair few as well. Their last five results are two wins, Birmingham and QPR, two draws, Hull and Southampton, and a defeat to Stoke. Those are on the road, yeah. Um, yeah, away. Good stuff. I mean, we know lots about Michael Carrick. Said big, big name, probably didn't get the recognition as a, as a player that he might have deserved for, you know, not underrated, but in a kind of understated role for Man United and, and didn't really, wasn't able to get past Steven Gerrard and Frank Lampard for England that much, but probably could have, uh, you know, had even more success than he actually did. But actually a pretty celebrated player, wasn't he, in terms of his trophy cabinet, as it were. It's a ridiculous honours list, isn't it? Yeah, obviously he's played the vast majority of his career at, at Man United. He's got uh, five Premier League titles, a Champions League, an FA Cup, a Europa League, a Club World Cup, three League Cups and six Community Shields. 34 England caps as well in a generation of, you know, Paul Scholes, Frank Lampard, Stephen Gerrard, Owen Hargreaves and obviously part of the Man United coaching setup under Mourinho. Mourinho promoted both him and Kieran McKenna to be his kind of joint assistant managers. So they know each other very, very well. Do you think his crown may have slightly slipped this season, given the emergence of McKenna at a, at a higher level and maybe a couple of others, because last season, you know, the job he did was phenomenal. Like I said, two points per game pretty much since he took over, gets Barrow to fourth. If he'd have had a similar season, do you think he would be kind of linked with jobs as McKenna is sometimes being? Do you think perhaps maybe this inconsistency has cost him a little bit and it might be a case if he has to go into a third campaign with Barrow before he gets a, a move elsewhere? Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, obviously, um Carrick's got another season in the championship on McKenna. Um, but, uh, you know, it's interesting that he doesn't get the attention McKenna does. I, I, yeah. I'd argue probably very similar in terms of their credentials, aren't they? Um, and yeah. Maybe there's there's something else about McKenna. And don't forget, there's a, there's a whole team around both of them as well, which is kind of in the, into the package as well. And maybe, you know, McKenna's backroom team may be doing slightly better I don't know perhaps than, than, than Carrick's but it's difficult to say it is interesting that you never see his name list linked with other clubs like McKenna's is with the yeah. likes of Crystal Palace West Ham Brighton and so on but uh, yeah it does feel a bit harsh but yeah it's interesting it was a bit, I, I think it'd be surprised if he leaves there but it probably for his own career needs to have some more success next season otherwise you just it gets a bit stale doesn't it eventually and yeah. you kind of end up maybe falling down the leagues perhaps I don't know but um in theory, um, they should be very similar. They're peers, aren't they, really? So, yeah, it's interesting yeah. to see. Yeah, how I, was just, I, just, I just think, yeah, I think the, the inconsistency, the disappointment, maybe because a lot of people were tipping them for automatics, I think that has gone against him and he's going to have to kind of go into a third campaign. And if he has a good a good start to next season, then, yeah, come the October or November madness of a of an international break, then a Premier League side might look to pick him up if they made a managerial change. But I think he'll have to be a bit patient for now, maybe. Yeah. History... Seb, looks like it's generally on our side in this fixture. It is, yeah. 32 wins for Town, 16 draws and 23 wins for Middlesbrough. 2-0 victory for us up at the Riverside in December. Chaplin and Hutchinson with the goals. Borough were really, really injury hit that day, but it was a really good performance. It came just after Watford, I think, didn't it? Just before the Norwich game and it, we were just effortlessly kind of pushing sides to, 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 to one side that time of the season. It was a really, really impressive performance. Last time at Portman Road, no recollection for me. 2-0 victory for Middlesbrough in October 2018. Paul Hurst was in our dugout. Uh, they were Tune up very early within 16 minutes, but I can't remember that at all. Can you? No, nope. you know, no, nope. generic 2 0 loss in the relegation season. Tick. Uh, the last <laughs> victory at Portman Road, everyone's going to remember this one, however. December 2014, goals from Daryl Murphy and Tabby as town leapfrocked Middlesbrough to go. Yeah, J Tab, Mike's got it there, Mike D's got it there in the comments. J Tab leaking, leaping, leaking, leaking. Like us. I'm so tired. He's a fish. Leaking. Leaping like a salmon. Lovely ball in from Teddy Bishop, wasn't it? Lovely cross in. Ooh. And all four foot two of J-Tab managing to get up and uh, and power the ball home. Do you want a line-up quiz or are you too, are you too tired for it? I can do it. Like, well, as long as it's not from that October 2018 2 Well, I'll give you the choice. What would you rather? <laughs> I, could, I could probably do the, the 14, December 14 one. Pretty good. Go on. 4-4-2. That'll shock you, but go four, on. 4-4-F-2. So, oh, 
I'm going to struggle with the left back, I think. Um, but Bart. Yeah. Uh, Smith, Berra, Chambo. Yeah. Who's it? It's not Nudson's not here by not now, here is he? Yeah. Uh, no, John Parr? The... Yeah, Johnny Parr, yeah. Uh, blimey, Scoose. Yes. Bishop, you mentioned Bishop. Yeah. Um, uh, is it Scuggless? It wasn't Scuggless by that point no, either. He hadn't arrived, no. was he? So Bishop and Scoose were in the middle. Johnny Jay Williams? Have you got on the left? No. Playoff semi-final hero against Norwich scored the equaliser. Oh, Paul Anderson. Yeah. And then up front, the trusted duo that year. Murphy McGoldrick. Murphy McGoldrick. Nice. Yeah. yeah, much easier to name that team. Um, there was a few randoms in there as well. We'd have had Chaplo against Watford's as well if we'd been talking about them. But nevertheless, we move on. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that took a second in the championship, you said here. Yeah, blimey. Uh, yeah, we were they were second. We were third. Us beating them, we went second. And then I think, did we beat Leeds, was it, the next weekend? And then obviously four. followed it up with the, uh, yeah, 4-1 against Leeds. And then it was the 4-2 infamous victory at Brentford. There was on one. The first top. Was there a 3 1 win at home to Charlton before we played Brentford on Boxing Day as well? I think there was cool. there was a 3 1 game in between Christmas and New Year, I think, as well, maybe, or something like that. Anyway, we move on. Let's talk about current season. Key arrivals. Uh, let's update folk on the squad at Borough and changes. You mentioned plenty of injuries. I'd expect, I, I was expecting a bit more business, if I'm honest, but uh, a good signing permanently from Plymouth, who we all know all about, and two others we probably know all about as well, given their stature. But yeah, tell us about them. Yeah, very good permanent sign. And Finazaz, who we know from last season with Plymouth and the first half of this season at Plymouth, he's come in for a couple of million quid from Villa. They cut his loan spell short at Plymouth in the first half this season. He joined Borough on a permanent. Luke Thomas, left back uh, on loan from Leicester. I think he had the first half of the season on loan at Sheffield United. The Premier League didn't really do much. So he's gone there for the second half of this term. And Luke Ayling, professional wind-up merchant. Luke Ayling uh, is the right back. And he's doing all right. He's gone on loan from Leeds for the second half of the season. He's doing okay. He's got four assists so far. The right-hand flank is something they really look to exploit. 40% of their attacks come down that right-hand side. And he's kind of slotted in and done and done quite well. So I'm sure at some point he'll take the hairband out to wind the crowd up just to just to annoy everybody. Had a few departures as well. They obviously we discussed in the summer they were selling assets. They've sold assets in the January window as well. Morgan Rogers is the big one. He went to Villa for a reported 8 million quid rising to 15 million pounds. Only joined from Man City last season. The original fee was undisclosed, but it was reported to be between 1 and 1.5 million pounds. So an absolutely huge uplift in a 6-month period that you just simply can't turn down if you're a non-parachute side. That's the kind of that's that's your business model, isn't it? Get yourself a young kind of Premier League Academy talent, get some numbers out of them. He got two goals and six assists in the first half of the season. And then a club like Villa with their resources can kind of take a take a punt on him. Uh, Matt Crooks, professional beta upper of Ipswich Town for the last few years, has gone out to the MLS. He's joined Salt Lake City for a million quid. I'm pleased about that. He was absolutely dross in the uh, December game, but he has a habit of scoring and uh, physically dominating our players, so I'm quite happy he's moved on. And Hayden Colson, do you remember him? He's gone on loan to Blackpool uh, mm -hmm. in, in League One for the second half of the season. So a few outgoing, some more money in the kitty. They didn't spend all the tube back on money last summer. They also got a bit of money for Martin Pereira, I think he was called. So I would suggest they might have a decent war chest going into this summer. Indeed. In terms of how Carrick has set the team up, Seb, surprise everyone by giving us the formation. It's a 4 2 3 1. No, Yay. is it? The, the formation that everybody plays at this level. Yeah, 4 2 3 1. They're slightly slow. It, it's very similar to, to how we play. They are slightly slower in terms of their build up play with more passes per sequence. They do take longer to get the ball forward. They don't press with anywhere near as the same intensity as us. They are ninth for pressing, sixth for touches in the opposition box. So they, are, they, they will look to get bodies into the box from the sort of number 10 position with Finazaz and the wide players. And as I mentioned, they're very strong with width. They will look to dominate the uh, both flanks of the pitch. The, the left back, Lucas Engel, and the previously mentioned Luke Ayling have four assists each. And the right-hand side, Ayling and Isaiah Jones will link up. And that's a, that's a real area to watch for them. Yeah, and in terms of the, the key men to watch out for, the players that we expect to start, you mentioned Latte Lathi's probably... The, the standout isn't he um, but it kind of feels like he needs a few chances to score is that fair 
I think so. Yeah, we he, he's top for shots on target per ninety minutes in the division. He has an average of one point eight, so t- two shots on target per ninety. Um, but he's only got eleven goals so far this season. He missed a did he miss a one on one in the December game or a, uh, an effort from just outside the Ooh. area? It was it was a good chance that he did put wide five million quid he cost them from Atlanta last summer. So I think they would have probably expected more than eleven goals going into the final couple of weeks of the season. Finazaz has carried on where he left off from Plymouth, three Thank goals him. and two assists so far. He plays the number ten in the four two three one can drift left. He had seven goals and five assists already from his time at Plymouth. So he's, he's having a decent season. Isaiah Jones, the guy I mentioned, he got the silly suspension, didn't he, in the home games that he wasn't featuring. He plays wide right, six goals and three assists. He'll be a threat. He's pacey, he's direct, he's quick off the block. So one to watch out for. He was suspended in the game against us, wasn't he? Because he got sent off at Leeds. Am I right? Um, yeah, he got. No, I think he got a, a, a silly. Didn't he get a silly fifth booking of the season? I think. Oh, um, possibly. Yeah, for some. Yeah, descent or something. Wasn't something it? silly descent or kicking the ball away or yeah something stupid um that meant he couldn't feature on that day sam greenwood is on loan from leeds he's been playing on the wide left of the the three behind the striker pretty ineffectual against hull and he's been he's been off it for the last couple of games so there's a trend of thought amongst the borough fans that samuel silvera might come in instead on the left hand side four goals and two assists for him center mid will be two from daniel barlaza somebody you bloody love like him lewis o'brien and johnny Howson. uh all three combative will get stuck in o'brien's kind of the box-to-box option he'll definitely start off the two and it'll be a case of is Bar Laser or is Johnny House and kind of the, the sitter, the screen for the for the defenders. Sunny Diang is the keeper, only three clean sheets away from home so far this season. And the centre backs are, shall we say, um uh, big old boys. Matt Clark, <laughs> ex ITFC, and uh, Rav Vanderberg are both six foot two. So I know we've discussed Kiefer Moore maybe playing with an injury, maybe not being slightly on it, but given the the, the big central defenders Borough have, I I think he's probably a shoe in to start. Yeah. Anyone, uh, there's no real note. Yeah, I'm trusting that injury is still a problem, but no one really massively knows. Not really, no. Josh Josh Coburn's a player. Yeah, Josh Coburn's a player I like. He's kind of the reserve centre forward. He's been out for a couple of months. Dale Fry, centre backs, missed the last 11 games. Paddy McNair picked up a knock with Northern Ireland in the international break. He's not going to feature. And then Hayden Hackney, he's kind of, he he played really well in the game against Chelsea. They got to the semi final of the League Cup, didn't they, and beat them 1 0 at the Riverside. Hayden Hackney's kind of a centre midfielder who likes to get forward. Uh, He missed a few games. Games was back on the bench last weekend against Swansea, but then was missing last night from the match day squad. Carrick came out and said, "No drama. He's not had a setback or anything. We should be careful with his uh, uh, with his, his his kind of comeback." But if he if he's missing, that would be he, he wouldn't start, but he'd be a threat off the bench. So if he can't make it, that would be a plus as well. I was going to uh, no no drama, but I'm not going to no go drama. There. No drama, man. Is that your is that your Gateshead uh, accent? Is it? That's that's more Michael Carrick impression. Uh, any statistical insights you want to finish off with? Say about. Uh, Maybe the the lack the possession number isn't particularly high. You'd probably think McKenna see Carrick, but it feels like it's a bit more maybe direct. I don't know. I'd... Give us well, they, yeah, they, they, they don't dominate possession. 48% away from home is the 13th highest in the league, so mm. mid-table. 83% passing accuracy is sixth. We've already discussed they do score goals away from home. 36 goals scored on the road. 25 of those have come from open play, which is the highest in the league. Seven from set pieces is sixth in the league. They take sh- 13 shots per game, which is the fourth highest. And five of those on target Ooh. is the third highest. So it, it's a side that will shoot, will shoot with a fair amount of accuracy. Um, and, and, and like I say, are, are a real threat from, from open play. Defensively, though, it's 34 goals conceded away from home is the seventh highest, so that's they need to tighten that up. They actually don't concede that many shots, weirdly. The, they've only conceded, 12 shots conceded per game isn't too bad. It's the eighth fewest uh, in the league, and they are the second highest for catching teams offside, so they've got that kind of high line and that, that, that last-minute step-out working quite well for them. So... <laughs> What's the reason for the goals then, Seb? Is it is it the dicking about the back? Maybe they're not as they've good been caught at... a couple of times doing that. But Carrick came out after the game last night, and he you know he said this is how we're going. You can imagine being a McKenna response. To be fair, it was exactly the same thing. You know, he said this is how we're going Very to play sense. out. I think he I think he listed a couple of goals they've scored that way. And do you remember when McKenna said, you know, if we can see the goal from playing out from the back. Everyone talks about it. If we hoof the ball up front and the ball comes straight back and we can see the goal, no one mentions it. You know, you, you, the way you kind of, like you said, process, if you're a process-driven manager, which Carrick clearly is, given his kind of fundamentals, with, which were instilled with him under the likes of Martin Yol, all the Man United managers he had there, then, then this is how he wants to play his football. And just like McKenna, even conceding from that those kind of mess-ups and playing at the back, it ain't going to stop anything. That's how they want to play and that's what they'll keep on doing. Cool. Here's Seb's Insight of the Week, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. 
everyone won't have seen this, but, but I, I, I have because. I, I still see Seb when something is on the screen and Seb wasn't expecting that to come up. So I started freaking. So, um, uh, yeah, it's still there. Don't worry. I've still got it. I Keep forgot going. you had it, to be honest. I forgot it was a new feature you bought in. Uh, Middlesbrough are very much a side of two halves. 19 goals conceded in the first 45 minutes of matches this season is the fourth worst in the division. But... 24 goals scored in the second halves is the highest. So basically, start quickly, get the get the game won by half time because they're a bit of a threat in the second half, but they're crap in the first half. <laughs> there you go. That's a professional assessment there. Uh, referee um, Sam Allison said, um, just being appointed to the Premier League official, the whatever they, the select is he a select official? So hopefully, should bode well. I guess I don't know. I don't know. Shown 111 yellow and one red in 31 games this season. Uh, the first black referee to take charge of a Premier League match in 15 years back in December. Uh, previous town games, he's refed us relatively recently. The 2-1 victory over Sunderland back in January. The 2-all draw at Portsmouth in Christmas time 2022. Was that a late Equalizer by Chapman, I think, wasn't it? Ooh. And a 2-1 victory over Fleetwood at Portman Road in October 2021. He was also the manager that sent off Carlos Corbran, wasn't the he? Manager. When Corbran went onto the pitch very briefly to kick a ball back, and he got sent off very early on in the game against Leicester. He uh, he also sent him off. There you go. Keep a lookout for the man in the middle there. So, I think we have... Uh... Anything more on Middlesbrough before we go I don't go think so. I've us? raced through it, given we spent a bit of time discussing what yes. first. I think we've yeah, ticked all, all the relevant bits. Yeah, good. Uh, let, let's do some admin. Um, let's see if properly we're Seb and I back into the groove um, by doing um, some bits of, of plugs. Uh, we mentioned we're brought to you in partnership with the Greyhound Best Pub in Ipswich. Perfect for a pre-match and even more so because they're getting behind the foundation day on Saturday. So uh, I think it was 50p a have a pint and um, a pound from their foundation burger goes to the foundation. So uh, buy lots of those, but give your support to Greyhound. Always good to build the atmosphere ahead of a Saturday game. Our promo for NordVPN, if you are following from afar or if you need protection whilst on the internet, for whatever reason, we don't ask any questions here at the Blue Monday podcast, but there is a link in the description. Get yourself some discounted NordVPN access and support the podcast in the process as well. So we appreciate that too. Usual bits and pieces are available on our website, bluemondayitfc.co.uk. All the links to our YouTube feed, podcast feeds, various different apps there. The merch store, if you want to buy Blue Monday merch. The Telegram group, if you want to get involved in the discussion during, before, after, 24-7, 365. There are people chatting over there. Do get involved in that two-week free trial. Now would be a really good time to sign up for that two-week free trial, potentially, with uh, the four games remaining. Uh, do come and Join the discussion, as we say, after and in between every single podcast. The flagship show is back. Mikey is back. So he's involved. I am back. So I'm involved. And Joe is back. Um, all of the absentees, we're just chucking them straight in and giving the guys who um, covered us so well over the last couple of weeks. They've been pulling, you know, doing all the hard work. Uh, ben, Craig and Dave have deserved a Sunday off. So it will be Mikey, Joe and I on the flagship show and as always if you are watching on youtube great numbers as always please do give us a thumbs up um especially if you're watching on youtube helps nudge us up various rankings and algorithmy things that only i really understand and also if you're listening on your podcast app of choice just give us a five star swipe review um and if you want to type one up even better than that as well thank you to the folks on facebook who have given us a thumbs up i see you uh, gord lee uh mark mark sean and matt as well matt is here scott too thank you everyone for getting involved over there um shall we do some chat about ipswich before we uh, before i forget <laughs> this gets onto the predictions what would you what changes would you be making seb if any ahead of saturday wolfenden will come back in for edmondson assuming he's got the injury that'll be the only change at the back um i probably i might bring twan zabi back given their left back likes to get forward and twan zabi's the better of the defensive options i think these games the fact that borough have to win i think that will go massively in our favor a bit like coventry and hopefully maybe hull coming up on the horizon i think sides that have to go out and win the game we can look to kind of exploit the space in behind that said i would have twan zabi at right back central midfield you said taylor played well so there's no reason i don't think for him to drop out him have him and morsey in the center positions and then chaplin probably comes back in doesn't he i would suggest broadhead on the left hutchinson on the right and then given their physical options at the center back 
it has to be Kiefer Moore, doesn't it? I know he looks knackered. Half the team look knackered. As I said earlier, you've just got to find a way to get through this game, get three points, and then you can sort of get some rest and recuperation into them for the last three games of the season. Do you agree with most of that assessment? Anything else you would do? Do you think it's time to give Sarmiento a start, given he's he's performed well off the bench recently, or would you keep it as pretty much the the kind of established kind of front three as we know it now? As much as I'd like Taylor to start, and I think he should, I think McKenna will want to get as close to that preferred first 11 as he can. So I think Luongo comes in. The fact he didn't play all of the last night suggests to me that he probably comes in, if I'm honest. I, I think that's a bit harsh on Taylor, who I thought deserves another go. Um, mm. But that would be that would be my guess. Um, I'm speculating on that. Um, Wolfram and yeah, no-brainer. I agree on, on to Nzabi at right back instead of Clark. I, um, Chaplin, Neil says Chaplin back in. That wouldn't I surprise so. me either. Yeah. Um, shift Hutchinson out to the right. And I think Broadhead plays rather than Samiento. Samiento didn't really um, do anything of note last night in his cameo as a, as a finisher. Um, so I wouldn't be changing that either. Broadhead, a couple of moments, obviously, you know, should do better with both chances, really, particularly the, the second one where he has the whole goal to aim at, um, but just offers us something that no one else really does. So I think that's it. And the, there's a big... Question isn't there? It, seems, it feels like both, you know, folk in the chat are saying this. Charlie, you know, who says Al Hamadi deserves a start in his opinion. I think both of our strikers are really nursing injury situations yeah. there. I think just because of Moore's presence and his yeah. experience, I don't think you can afford to not start him. So that would, I think that makes sense as well. Seb, to your point, I think Al Hamadi on the bench. So yeah, um, let us know your thoughts on that. We'll come back to those bits and pieces after we've done the predictions. But anything more? Seb on Borough v Ipswich for now? No, nope. no, we're good. We think we've ticked them all off. And uh, like I say, sides that will have to come and play football against us, I would always back us, to be honest, in a game. They have to win on Saturday. If they don't and results go against them, they won't be able to catch sixth place. So they will have to come and be expansive against us. They've got quick players. The fullbacks like to push up, which means I think there'll be a lot of space in behind that we can exploit. There you go. So it's a shame we don't have Wes Burns, eh? Let's do predictions. <laughs> Thanks once again to Ed Lay and editors for letting us use the track. A ton of love for the link. If that is in the description as well, if you want to listen to that song in full, that's the instrumental version, by the way, but I always appreciate the drums in that. Good old Ed and editors. And that song, sadly, Seb, um, Aging Us, uh, is I think it was from 2011 as well. So it's over 10 years old, which is depressing, isn't it? Let's lift our spirits by doing some predictions. Worth noting, um, I, I'm need to move spreadsheets around i did something to make it work for the guys last week and haven't had time to reintegrate it but i think uh jacob in telegram won the week i think he got nine points craig despite predicting an ipswich win at norwich which frankly is just no sane predictor would have predicted an ipswich win at carrow road let's be honest uh but craig came second with eight points and then ben a little bit sadly for you um Seb a little bit behind the four I think it was so not done your uh, hopes of making a last minute dash um any favors there and I think if I'm right someone I think it was Jonathan in the chat said this might be a last 3 p.m kickoff of the season it is it is yeah we've got two night games and then a Sunday a Saturday 12 30 to come so this is our penultimate prediction uh, like this, the pre-match show uh, predictions this is probably oh, no. penultimate, isn't it oh no what are you cup. ready to wave the white flag yet or do you want one more round i won but last time between you and me i did win we That's were just true. out of the country craig very kindly mentioned it i did a i did a fist pump in the air in vegas as he said that i'd uh i'd beaten you but no i'm i'm presuming at this point i probably can't catch you you are the Southampton to my Ipswich. Let's well, let's hope that plays out as I as we all hope it will do, rather than me tempting fate. Uh, let's have a look and see what we've got. Welcome to the uh, to Jack, who is representing the Telegram group. Uh, we wish him well for his cameo, for brief cameo at the end of the season. And here are the games, Seb. Uh, let's pick out the key ones for the promotion race, Plymouth. The Leicester on Friday night. Are you expecting any favours from Plymouth? No, you are. I'm not. No, I know they've sacked Foster, so maybe a new manager bounce might kick in. Jack's confident, obviously, they might drop points. I mean, Plymouth will be scrapping for their lives, and sometimes crazy results can happen when teams do change their manager. But you and me both think that Leicester will get the get the three points. And I'm okay with that because I kind of thought with their game in hand, I know they lost to Millwall midweek, but I kind of thought with their game in hand, even when we were kind of, you know, back up to second, that they would win that and go top. And it's fine. They can have the title. That's fine. I'll give them the title. We'll have second. 
Well, then Leeds need to drop points to help us out. And Blackburn, who got pumped midweek, didn't they? Was it 5-0? Yeah. 5-0 by Bristol City. Yeah. So we're not confident that Blackburn have got the, the Sunderlands Ooh. about them to go to Ellen Road. No, no, I think they'll get smashed. Well, I've gone 3-0, Jack's gone 3-0, you've gone for a 2-0. None of us are expecting anything off Blackburn. And obviously, by the time we next play after this game, Leeds will have played twice more, won't they? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And we have a, hopefully, a chance to recuperate. So, yeah. Um, any other games there catch your eye? Hull, obviously, still hunting a promotion spot. I've gone for a Hull win, but you and Jack going for a draw there. You well, keep your ass. Fuentes has is, is done incredibly well since he took over, so I think they could pull out a uh, pull out a point there. And then a huge game at the bottom, South Sheffield Wednesday against Stoke. We, we've, you and me have gone for Sheffield Wednesday victories. Uh, Jack's gone for a, for a one-all there. I saw some stat earlier that Sheffield Wednesday could spend the entirety of the season in the relegation zone until the very last game and suddenly get out of it, which would be quite an impressive feat. So, a great yeah, escape. Yeah, indeed. At the bottom. And Birmingham I'm, need a win drastically, don't they, but they they are just nose diving their way into into League One, despite their multi billion pound stadium expansion plans. Have you seen oh, the image? Think, for it? Yeah, it looks like it what looks like the kind of we saw in Vegas, the T Mobile all giant it's arena not. thing, and they're going to have yeah, they're going to have training complexes there. And bless them, you can tell they're American and aren't used to British kind of planning permission and local councils. And it's stuff. way too I'd, big, mate. It's way too big. That's not going to fit you. I, I admire their optimism. You can take the boy out of the Midlands. Uh, Southampton, Watford, I'm going for a nil-nil, Seb. I think Watford are draw specialists, and I predict them to do what they did to us to Southampton, but you're going for a 2 nil. Southampton, there was some chat last night. South, Southampton have still got to play Leicester and Leeds, don't they? So Southampton could be kingmakers, couldn't they? Yeah, but they if they do that, in hand as well. if they do that, they're not, you know, given the stuttering form of the top three, Southampton might not be out of it. It's probably a stretch, no, isn't it? But it'd be funny, wouldn't it? It would be funny, yeah, but I think I think they are. I think they're out of it. I Knowing think. they need to go to the Leeds on the last day, you know, but yeah, maybe, but maybe. Yeah, I think I, I think they're out of it. Any other games there? Swansea, Rotherham, meh. West Brom, Sunderland, meh. Yeah. Um. Uh, let's talk about let's talk about us. We're going for narrow Ipswich Town victories. One nil for me. Two one for you. I'm surprised, given your research, you didn't go for a three two. Uh, but do you want to show you're working? Borough will score because they score goals away from home, but we will score twice. I think it'll be nervy. I can't necessarily say it's going to be an overly enjoyable afternoon. It would be lovely, wouldn't it, if it was just put to bed one of those kind of 3-0 jobs by half time that we kind of did against Millwall and, and the like earlier in the season. But I think it might be a bit nervy. 2-1, get across the line. And then, as we've said, you've got two weeks then before that three-game mini-season at, the at the end of April. You yeah. think we'll keep a clean sheet against them? Uh, well, I, we've kept a clean sheet Tuesday I guess that was partly maybe down to the opposition and their intent um, but I think we're defending pretty well I like Burgess Wolfenden comes back in maybe Twin Zabie comes back in I just think it would be a low mar you know really marginal game it might be decided by a set piece or something like that um, but yeah I, I fancy us at the moment to be defensively resolute we did we're apart from a we didn't. We haven't had a chance to talk about the Norwich game, which was crap. Let's let's call it what it was, and, and a really you know, a crapper at four thirty a.m. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> but apart from the stupid free kick for them, really, you know, a few moments on the break, and that was basically it, wasn't it? So, I kind of, I kind of think we're defensively solid, which is a, a change. Um, but you know, Borough have got that attacking pedigree as you say they're 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 attuned to attack so yeah yeah three two may be a score and to be fair to jack jack's uh, gone for the goals hasn't he yeah that's four, gone for two. a four two jack's, yeah jack's thinking four two so maybe he'll be proved right that'll be slightly more comfortable than my my two one yeah we need the um we need the spirit of jade tab don't we let's see what the chat has to say uh neil uh agrees seb uh don't think clark will play two games in such short time um uh, Gray, get the points Saturday and break because we look really the other, yeah. leggy the other night. Here come the predictions. Collins gone for Ipswich Town FC3. Middlesbrough 1. Mark going for the 3-2 that we've mooted but didn't predict ourselves. Trevor with the right... This is the right call. Just win. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. I don't care how. Own goal. Deflected. Lucky FC goal. We don't care. Um, yeah, good shout, Trevor. Charlie going for the 3-2. Uh, Michael showing his working as always. 2-0 to town. Moore and Taylor off the post from 40 yards. And he predicting Hurst and Burns on the bench for the last three games. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Uh, Metal Chase. I'm loving the use of emoji numbers there as well. He's going for a 1-0 like me. Jem uh, is matching up with Jack's 4-2. Um, 
So what else have we got? Uh, one nil. Oh, he's, he's duplicated it. That's fine, Mel J. So I'm happy to put it twice. Uh, what else have we got? Leeds 4 1 says Neil. I'm happy to have other predictions as well. Uh, what else have we got? <laughs> the Neil Johnson, the new Birmingham State, the Bordesley Bernabeu. Uh, 2 1 says uh, Neil for Saints. Southampton winning 2 1. I love how we're getting wider predictions here. We need to. Uh, get other people involved, don't we? In the uh, in the other predictions, Charlie going for a two one three two says Neil. Um, Gem, here we go, manifesting again. Plymouth three, Leicester one. That would be good going into that's Saturday, Friday night, then. isn't it? Is that right? Friday yeah. night, and then Leeds is the twelve thirty. Yeah, yeah. They'll both have played by the time we kick off. Okay. Yeah, we've got yeah. Uh, Steve five nil town set us up for the run in. I'll do. Just be uh, nice and comfortable, like like the Sheffield Wednesday game. Let's just do that again. That'd be brilliant. A lot of people predicting Plymouth to do something. Maybe that new manager bounces you were talking about, Doctor Zach King three one town scoring boots back on. We do need to get our scoring boots on though. Some missed chances on Tuesday night and very little in the way of attacking intent at Norwich as well. So definitely. You'd hope that the shooting boots will be on, as Dr. Zach King says there. Um, Michael Kemp, uh, Jackson to start, as his pace could be the key to turn their central defenders. I think the probably fair, isn't it? Those big physical units at the back, Seb, will not be the quickest, will they? We know Matt Clark, certainly, I don't think is renowned for his pace, is he? No, yeah, and Lucas Engel, the, the left-back, will bomb forward. So if Jackson plays wide right, there will be space in behind to exploit. Yep. Uh, Jonathan's going for a 1 0 with a penalty. Uh, that's we don't score point. penalties. No, we, we say, get one, you, we, yeah, we don't get them. Let alone <laughs> score them. <laughs> we don't get them. Yeah. I'm thinking yeah. who scores it. Uh, we'll be back next week and a Leeds 2 1 there from Colin as well. We'll be back next week or whenever that is. We won't be back next week, will we? It's two weeks' time or whenever it is. We'll be back at some point. Um, maybe Huddersfield. I don't know. Who who knows what we'll, the league table will look like then um, to figure out how everyone has got on. We are in added time, um, so we've done really well. Thank you to Seb for taking us through Borough. Thank you, everyone, for your insight and discussion in the chat as well. If you've got any last-minute shout-outs or predictions, get them in now. Um, Seb is going to sign us off because Tess asked for it, and we need to maintain that record, so we'll do that. I will remind you to go to the Greyhound and support the ITFC Foundation Day, both there and around the ground on uh, Saturday. NordVPN, if you want that merch store telegram if you want that too but the flagship show will be talking about borough after the event on sunday night 8 p.m live here on youtube and on podcast afterwards please do uh, do give us a like and a subscribe here on youtube do give us a five star rating and a review on your podcast app of choice and thank you so much for everyone for joining us uh both wearied probably said more than i, I think at the moment um Poor Seb has worked so hard on the script and is a bit knackered. He'll be going off to bed straight after this. So uh, please give him some love in the chat as well. And as always, thank you, everyone. Hope you've got plenty of ammunition to look like you know what you're talking about. Like we all do at Portman Road on Saturday. Seb, you'll be there, won't you, as well? So come and see us at the Greyhound. Yes, very much so. Travelling down tomorrow night and looking forward to it. And Tony Rand, I'm sorry, I'm just finishing off my half pint at the club. There you go. And a photo of him in his Blue Monday sweatshirt as well, which I hope will be worn on Saturday as well, Tony. Uh, Seb, uh, last minute thoughts from you. I'll put some comments on the screen. Thank you to everybody for watching. Thank you to, for you to hosting. We got through it. Well, uh, normal service will be a reason. You might be a bit slicker next time we're out against Hull, wherever it's going to be. So, yes, thank you, everybody. Come to the Greyhound. Come and say hello to us all. We are four games from the Premier League, which sounds <laughs> crazy. Win them all, and we are up. It starts on Saturday. Make Portman Road loud. Make it noisy. Make it a feverish atmosphere. Get behind the team. They're going to need us and we can close in on promotion. Come on, you blues. Thank you.